And that's all that there really is to say about the guy. So uh, this episode is uh, episode 302. It's called Sarah. We've been in the episode with Oliver. He shuts down emotionally. Uh, and, you know, they, they, he sets forth on the, the mission to find out who killed Sarah. And it's, uh, you know, they, they talk about, you know, well, there's only a few people in the world that have these archery skills that could kill Sarah with bows and arrows and shit. Uh, they go through the Argus database and they find out that it's this guy named Simon LaCroix. So there's this other archer going around the town. He meets up with uh, Lance. And there's this other archer going around killing people. And they find out that all the people getting killed are um, involved in this oil deal with the Maritech Industries. And uh, there's this uh, one guy that uh, LaCroix uh, attacked but didn't get killed. So he's in the hospital. Laurel shows up in the hospital room and... Uh, his hospital room, he, uh, she, uh, says, you know, crazy Jack Bauer bullshit to try to get information from him, and, uh, then, uh, Komodo, uh, shoots some arrows or some shit, uh, through the window and kills the guy. Uh, meanwhile, we got the, the Bray Palmer stalking Felicity bullshit, just like last episode, and, you know, hinting at the, you know, they're going to be possibly an item. Um, Felicity uh, gives uh, Oliver this big speech about... Uh, he, she doesn't understand how Oliver can be so stoic and shit. And Oliver's like, you know, everyone's looking for me to lead. You know, I don't have the, the uh, luxury of being able to grieve like you guys can. So, that, you know, that that's good. Like... Oliver's being dark and broody here, but here, there's a reason for it, and they give a good reason. It's not like in later in the season where he's being dark, broody Batman just because the fucking writers don't know how to write his character properly. And they just start writing the character like Batman since they're doing a Batman storyline, and they're just lazy. They, 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 they can't even... They're gonna rip off the storyline from the fucking... Batman comic. They can't even bother to change the character to Green Arrow. We'll, we'll, we'll just write them like Batman. <sighs> so anyway, uh, they uh, uh, they figure out that uh, Komodo's next target is going to be at a uh, a party that Ray Palmer's uh, going to throw. Sure enough, um, Komodo shows up. Oliver and Komodo get in a big fight. Lowell shows up with a gun and is about to blow the guy away. And uh, she was about to. She pulls the trigger and everything, mind you. And But the gun wasn't loaded, right? But for all intents and purposes, this makes Lowell a murderer. Right? Because she totally... Intended to kill the guy. This is just like in Avengers where Thor fully intended on killing Captain America. He didn't know the fucking shield was made out of vibranium. It's the same thing. And then just like in Avengers, no one calls Thor out on this. That he's a, he's a superhero, but yet he, he, he just nonchalantly was going to murder a guy over something stupid. Same thing. Like, Lowell's not even called out, uh, out on it. When she's like the district attorney of Starling City, she's going to take the law into her own hands like that. Okay. <sighs> so, um... So, the trail ends up cold. Um, Komodo goes to jail. Um, and they realize, you know, this guy had, you know, nothing to do with it. Um... Laurel is about to go tell her dad that Sarah got murdered and she pushed out because she has no balls, apparently. And, you know, this bullshit excuse, oh, well, he has a heart condition. Just tell the guy, just... And, of course, that, that's the whole reason why uh, that Miracuru soldier attacked him last season. I, I suppose that's what that is. Um... 
and now Diggle, you know, after the, the little character arc he went through last episode about how uh, he uh, has got to, you know, take a step back, sit things out for now on. Oh, never mind, because uh, now he wants to help Oliver and everyone find Sarah's killer. Okay. And he names his baby after Sarah, which, I, you know, is cute. Uh, you know, it works. Um... You know, but hey, I mean, at least you guys gave Diggle something to do for like two episodes. That's good. That's uh, that's better than usual track record of giving just something to do for one episode. That's that's an improvement. So he's back at square one. It's like, what the point? What was the point with all that? Um, uh, and then Oliver and Diggle share a nice scene at the end where uh, you know, Oliver, you know, finally after. This whole uh, red herring, you know, cat and mouse chase with uh, Komodo's over. He, you know, he, he confesses the the Diggle that he, you know, he doesn't want to die down here in the the Arrow Cave, and then realizing that, you know, Diggle realizing that Oliver has a choice in matter, says, "Well, then don't." So that that was actually a pretty good scene, um, and then we get the uh, tease at the end with. Uh, Thea and Merlin and Cordo Maltese, and you see them together. So, again, this is um, Merlin. You know, hasn't really interacted with Oliver and all of them since se the season one finale, and um, so Oliver and all of them, they don't, they don't know that he's still alive yet. So this is very cool. So you know, they're building up the anticipation for when they're gonna finally meet. So that's that's cool. That's a nice way to end the. Uh, the episode, because, uh, you know, it's, a, cause it's suggesting that we're finally going to get Merlin and Oliver meet the next episode. So, get you excited for that episode. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, not a whole lot uh, to criticize about this episode, other than that weird Laurel bullshit, where <laughs> essentially Laurel's a murderer, and it's just kind of swept under the rug, like, okay, whatever. Um... I mean, really not, it's just like the last episode, it was a good episode, if you take everything out of context, if you, uh, you know, forget about Discount Iron Man, if you forget about where the, the flashbacks are going to eventually go, where the murder mystery is going to go, and, you know, it goes in a very predictable place, but for now, it's being done pretty good. Um, Komodo not being used all that great, I can see why they used them for this episode, because they wanted a, a red herring, so... You know, another archer. So, I mean, if you go into the Green Arrow, uh, the comics, I mean, other than, than uh, Merlin, uh, you know, one of the big uh, archers that come to mind is Komodo. And, you know, why not make him one of the red herrings, right? But here he's just used he, he, as like a, is a friggin', you know, hired gun nobody. And in the comics, he's more than that. And... And people have suggested that, well, you know, he can, later on, he, they can use him to a better effect. You know, they can use him to his full potential. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, there's nothing in this episode that would suggest that he's more than what he is in this episode. Which is, you know, again, a just hired gun mercenary type. I, unless this uh, Ameritech Industries oil company has something to do with the Outsiders War or um, Hive or something, I don't see them doing anything more than Komodo. For, so, for all intents and purposes, his character seems pretty ruined in this universe. And it's just another big F you to Jeff Lemire. Um, there was even rumors I, um, earlier in the season that they were going to use him in the Suicide Squad, possibly later in the season, but uh, that didn't happen. I mean, we... Up to this point, we're at the end of season three now. We have not seen this guy again. And uh, he's certainly not going to show up in the Suicide Squad because there is no more Suicide Squad in Arrow because uh, they're fucking uh, the DC uh, embargoes and shit. But we'll get to that once we get to this season's Suicide Squad episode. But that won't be until the, the next set of videos anyway. So yeah, overall... Good episode, you know, keeping the pace, pr pretty plot heavy, 
but you know good episode pretty exciting and we still got an intriguing mystery of who killed sarah murder mystery thing going on so good for the show so far so good um the next episode our villain is uh, a guy by the name of manhunter mark shaw and um in the comics, Mark Shaw, Manhunter, is a uh, this uh, public defender who joins a cult of androids and calls himself Manhunter. <laughs> yeah, it's some crazy bullshit, right? Crazy, crazy bullshit. And the New 52 is a U.S. Marshal who hunts people down, hence Manhunter, because he hunts men, and he's really good at it. Uh, 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 like, that's all relevant information anyway, because... What they do with the guy in this episode is nothing like the source material. A lot like what they did with Vertigo earlier this season, or you know, a lot of other examples of characters they've used on the show that are a whole lot like the source material. Just naming them after something from the DC Comics universe for fanboys, I guess, because you're not gonna really care unless you read the comics about obscure characters like that. Um. So yeah. So. Uh, flashbacks in this episode are focused on uh, Merlin and Thea and what they were doing over the summer while uh, Team Arrow is over there in Starling City kicking ass and taking names. Thea is with Merlin and Cordo Maltese, uh, which is a, uh, it's, good, it's like one of these Caribbean islands. It's like uh, supposed to be like Cuba or something. It's, you know, totally fictitious. It's like, uh, Nanda Parbat, or, you know, one of these other fictitious uh, lo locales in the, the DC universe. Because, you know, unlike Marvel, DC uses a lot of fictitious places, like, a lot more like Gotham and Metropolis and things like that, other than the New York and things. Um, so, yeah, nothing really comes from those, though. Who cares? They're just... Merlin's basically just training her in archery and shit. Uh, that's basically the gist of it. And we know that Thea went with him willingly and is staying in Corto Maltese willingly. Not exactly sure if I buy that, but okay. Um, so the death. Um, so this episode, it's called uh, Corto Maltese, episode three o three. And uh, after the events of the previous episode, Oliver realizes he needs to reconnect with Thea and the family's all important and things like that. So they track um, Thea's phone to Cordo Maltese. Um, Roy kind of warn Roy warns. Oliver about going because uh, before Thea left, she left Roy a note saying don't try to look for me or any shit like that, but uh, the note didn't say anything about Oliver, so fuck it, they go to Coral Maltese. Meanwhile, um, Lila, which is uh, Diggle's ex-wife there, um, wants Diggle to check up on this Argus agent. Hey, what a coincidence! Um, again with the coincidences, just like, uh, Komodo showing up last episode as this archer guy who's going around killing people at the same time that Sarah gets killed with bows and arrows. But hey, hey, let's give him a pass because the rest of the, these episodes are good so far, so the rest of the shit in these episodes is pretty good, give him a pass. So we'll give him a pass on this big coincidence that there's this shit going on. With Argus and Cordo Maltese, the same time that Oliver just often decides to go to Cordo Maltese. So, anyways, there's this um, Argus agent who may have met, went missing. So Diggle says, "Fine, I'll, I'll look into it while I'm down there." Um, so Oliver shows up at Malcolm's. Um, Malcolm is right behind the door with a fucking bow and arrow in hand. So here's the moment we've been waiting for. The big showdown. The Dark Archer versus Green Arrow rematch. Then some gardener shows up and um, 
asked what the hell he's doing there, and uh, 